Well, let me explain to you how ice dams happen. First of all, in the wintertime, you're heating the rooms below. And if you don't have any insulation in the floor, that warm air is gonna come up and get into the attic. And when it comes up, it's gonna heat the underside of the roof. Now, when you have a lot of snow on the roof, like we did this past winter, that snow acts like an insulation blanket. Now, the warm air in the attic is heating the lower layer of that snow, melting it, turning it into water, and it's running down the roof shingles. When it reaches the cold overhang, it freezes, forming a dam. Now, this process continually happens. So the ice dam gets bigger, the water gets higher. I built a little mock-up here to show you. Now, roofs are designed to shed water in one direction, down. So when it rains, the rain comes down, hits the roof, and the water goes down. In the wintertime, when you have that ice dam, that holds the water and the reservoir grows. As the reservoir gets deeper, it goes under the shingle. When it goes under this shingle and hits the top of the underlying shingle, water can then enter the house. Well, one option is to make the attic the same temperature inside as it is outside all winter long. So the first thing you need to do is air seal it. That means you wanna seal up any gaps from penetrations, like this wire that's coming up, see that hole right there? Yep. All right, so you wanna spray foam in there to fill that hole up. Now after you've air sealed, the next thing you have to do is insulate. Now you can insulate in between the floor joists, but if you just insulate between the floor joists, you're not gonna have enough R factor. You need a minimum of an R38, and the only way you're gonna get it is to lay another layer across the floor, like that, and make it nice and tight. The other thing you have to do is you have to introduce ventilation. You want to bring that cold air in in the wintertime. Keep the roof cold so the snow won't melt. Okay, but we've still got this office over here that we'd like to continue using. And we'd also like to be able to use this as storage space. And if there's a layer of insulation here, that's going to be tough. Well, actually, there is another option. You can actually make this space condition space. That means make it warmer. The way you're going to make it warmer is you're not going to insulate the floor. You are going to insulate the outside wall, and you're going to insulate between the rafters. You're still going to need an R38. The only way you're going to get an R38 in this depth of the rafter is to use a closed cell spray foam. And we're going to do that today. That sounds perfect. Let's get started. Okay. Spray foam insulation is definitely not a do-it-yourself project. We have a professional crew with a big truck and a lot of equipment. We're using closed cell spray foam instead of open cell spray foam. And what's the difference? Well, the closed cell spray foam has a higher R factor per inch. It also has a vapor retarder and water can permeate it. And after he sprays it, it will expand. It sticks to the sheathing, sealing all the gaps. He needs to do it in two inch increments. Closed cell foam has an R value of 6.4 per inch. With a six inch rafter, we're gonna end up with a little more than R38, just what we need. This is the best way I know of sealing up your attic and making it tight. You'll save energy and you'll prevent any ice dams. Once the last layer sets up, they'll shave it off, making it flush with the rafters. Well, Fred, we're just about done. What do you think? Looks fantastic, Tom. Feels warmer already. It does, doesn't it? Well, the building code requires in this attic that the foam be covered with a thermal barrier. And that means 15 minutes of fire protection. All you need to do to get that is cover it with half-inch wall board. Mm -hmm.